Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, welcome to the January 6, 2022 uh, Muslim Space Khutbah. Happy New Year, everyone. <clears throat> Inna alhamdulillah, na'hmaduhu, wa nasta'inuhu, wa nasta'ghfiruhu, wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina, wa min sayyat a'amalina. Min yahdihillahu falamudillallah, wa man yudlilhu falahadiyalah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ahdahu la sharika la, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا فوزا عظيما All praises belong to Allah we praise him and ask him for forgiveness and for guidance we seek protection in Allah, from the malice of our own souls and from the evil of our own actions. Whoever Allah guides, no one can lead him or her astray. And whoever he leads astray, no one can lead him or her back to the straight path. I bear witness that there is no other deity except Allah by himself, no associates with him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. O oh, you who have believed, be mindful and be reverent of Allah as you should be and do not die except as a Muslim. O you who believe, be mindful and be reverent of Allah and always say a word directed towards the truth so that he can make your conduct whole and sound and forgive you for your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has then attained the highest achievement. I speak today, my brothers and sisters, with a message of hope and positivity. This message of hope is centered around tawbah. This is commonly translated into English as repentance, but more specifically, it truly means, if you look at the dictionary term, it means a returning to, a returning to. So when you say tauba, it really means a returning to. In the context of our tradition, the tradition of Islam, it is a return or returning to our maker, the one who created you, the one who breathed his spirit into you and into me and created us from nothing. There was once nothing, and then there was you, there was us. The Lord of all who deemed that your community, you're my planet, the galaxy we live in is incomplete without you. Just stop for a few seconds and think about that. You are a necessary part of all of this that's around us. So Tauba is an oft recited and frequently repeated word almost to the point that it has lost its impact. A return to our maker is an active and not a passive event. And we are called by Allah in his holy book, the Quran, to do so many, many, many times. But how often do we really practice a true return to God, a true repentance? And what does that really mean? And why should you repent? You haven't really done anything bad and God doesn't care about the small stuff. We pray and we're good and we give some charity and we fast and we don't believe in idols and we don't eat pork products. So it's all good, right? So I'll begin with the saying of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a hadith about tawbah. If anyone constantly seeks forgiveness, Allah will appoint, so quote, if anyone constantly seeks forgiveness, Allah will appoint for him or her a way out of every distress and relief from every anxiety and will provide sustenance for him or her from where they could never imagine, unquote. So if you constantly seek forgiveness, Allah will find a way out for you from whatever distress you're in. And a way out that you never thought was possible. And think about your life. If you reflect, that may have happened to you a few times. In the Quran, we read, Bismillah ar rahim in Surah Al-Tahrim, chapter 66, verse 8. Bismillah ar rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu tubu ila Allahi lawbatan nasuhan asa rabbukum an yukaffir ankum sayyatikum wa yudkhilukum jannatin tajri min tahtiha al anhar yawma la yajzi Allahu al nabiyya wal ladhina amanu ma'ahu nuruhum yas'a bain aydihim wa baimanihim yaquluna rabbana atmim lana nurana wa aghfir lana Quote, O believers, turn to God in sincere repentance. 
Your Lord may well cancel your bad deeds for you and admit you into gardens graced with flowing streams on a day while God will not disgrace the prophet or those who have believed with him, with their light streaming out ahead of them and to their right. And they will say, Lord, perfect our light for us and forgive us. You have power over everything, unquote. That's the translation by Abdul Halim. Just, con just contemplate that verse, 66, verse 8. I find the combination of returning and repentance interesting and something that I ponder. It takes physical and mental energy to turn to anything. In order to see something, I may have to turn my body towards that thing to see it. If I have to think about something, I have to turn my thoughts toward whatever that is. That takes active energy and it's not a passive thing. It's not something that automatically flows. Further, when we are turning towards something, in this case, a law, then by definition, we are turning away from something else, specifically, specifically turning away from darkness. But consider the subtle difference between turning and returning. Tauba is a returning. We all originally came from Allah, and to him we return. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajihun, as we are commanded to say in the Quran when we are faced with the distress. So remember that Tauba isn't you turning towards Allah. You are going back to where you came from. And it's not a new and unfamiliar place. In fact, if we're not facing Allah, if we're not directing our thoughts to Allah, then we are in an unfamiliar place. If I'm doing something wrong, if I'm cheating, I'm lying, I'm being cruel or simply being mean to someone because I'm in a bad mood, or I'm doing something or I'm somewhere that I'm, where I don't belong, then we're not in our familiar comfort zone. That's a dark place. It's an unnecessary place to be. <clears throat> so what's the purpose of repentance? We all have made and will continue to make mistakes from offending someone to offending ourselves, harming the environment, to not being a good steward of trust that someone's placed in us. We are imperfect. At the other end is perfection, which is Allah, the Almighty, the Great. Remember, he specifically created you and me for a purpose. The one who is perfect and the Almighty, his majesty, deemed it necessary to create us. When, when reflecting on this, it's reasonable to ask, am I praying with enough sincerity? Am I praising him enough? Many of us, myself included, are focused on our personal issues. Many of us have a to-do list near term and long term? What do I have to get done today? What do I have to get done before the weekend? What do I need to get done over the next few months? And many of us have a to do list that are thrust upon us at work. It's easy for us to let these tasks take over our minds from the moment we wake up to the moment we sleep and even allow them to interrupt our sleep. And it's easy for these tasks to magnify in our heads and take over. Sometimes our issues have to do with our work or relationships. Sometimes these issues become obsessions obsessions with money and finances, obsessions with our family's welfare, with anxieties and worries about the future and the unknown. And then these anxieties become our North Star. And so the focus becomes ourselves, our egos. And we can then inflate these worries and then thus inflate our egos. While humility is necessary, we can lose ourselves and lose our humility as a result. And then there's another trap, the past. Many of us have regrets and feel remorse over things that we've done or said. And there may be, this may create a profound sense of shame or guilt. And then this becomes an obsession. And sometimes we continue to ruminate over lost opportunities, lost chances. And then it starts to become easy to feel bad about ourselves, to feel ashamed or low. And this feeling can become very powerful. And it be, creates a sense of worthlessness. And we tell ourselves we're not worthy. So while that's the opposite of arrogance and ego, this is also self-defeating on this side where we feel worthless. Because if we're not worthy, then why should I turn to Allah? What's the point? But Allah has answered this already in the Quran, in Surah Az-Zumar, chapter 39, verse 53. Bismillah ar-Rahim. Qul ya ibad, qul ya ibadi al-lati nasrafu ala anfusihim, la taqnatu min rahmatillah. Inna Allah 
Say, God says, my servants who have harmed yourselves by your own excesses, do not despair of God's mercy. God forgives all sins. He is truly the most forgiving, the most merciful. Again, the translation by Abdul Halim. And then again in chapter 4, verses 110, Surah An-Nisa. Whoever commits evil or wrongs themselves and then seeks Allah's forgiveness will certainly find Allah all forgiving, all merciful. That's a translation by Mustafa Khattab. Think about this for a moment. These verses and this last one it's considered one of the most joyous verses of the Quran. So no matter how guilty or how badly you feel about what you did, Allah will take you into his embrace and forgive if we ask, if we repent. I listened to an excerpt of a lecture, and I don't know who gave it, that basically he was talking about this topic. If you spend your entire life in, in doing wrong things, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and you don't even think about God, and then you come to a point where you say, Ya Rabb, my Lord, Ya Rabb, Allah will answer, yes, my slave, what, what do you want? Ya Rabb, forgive me. And Allah will say, I have forgiven you. So think about that while we take a break. I ask Allah for forgiveness for you and for me. <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, these tendencies and anxieties and regrets that we all have create a space between us and our creator, a huge space. This is a space of our own making for Allah is nearer to us than our jugular vein, as it says in Surah An-Najm, chapter 53, verse 16. And recall Allah breathed his spirit into us when he created us, as I said in the beginning. We have a divine nature in us. And so we are permanently connected to Allah, no matter how many layers and layers of crud we have on us. Allah knows our innermost thoughts and what's in our hearts at all times. More than we want to admit, how many of us deny what's inside us? How many of you run away from what you're really thinking? Think about that. Allah intimately knows our true nature. So even though Allah is closest to us at all times, we create a space and turn away from him. And we become closer to these worries and anxieties and regrets and wants and obsessions. In a sense, we're consciously or subconsciously placing these things ahead of Allah. We inadvertently place our egos ahead of everything and before everything. In a sense, we're putting those ahead of Allah. We've turned away from Allah instead of towards him. That, my brothers and sisters, is why we need to return to Allah, to God. That's where tawbah comes in. Tawbah is turning away from the darkness of our anxieties and regrets and actions and returning to God. It is through repentance and through repentance alone that we can do that. Repentance and a returning changes the focus from ourselves and our problems and changes our focus to God. Rather than focusing on what someone else did to you or what someone else is doing, what you are doing, we start to focus on the ever living, al hay Allah. All these other things will die and go away. By redirecting our minds, the mindset shifts from the past and the future and shifts to the present, the now and the where you are. Remember, you and your problems will go away. When your body dies, it's just going to be your soul and God. Whether you want to or not, you are going to realign towards Allah. So start realigning now. So again, sisters and brothers, Allah wants us, God wants us to be with him. And one of the mechanisms to do so is via repentance. God wants us to call out to him. Allah wants to hear us ask from him. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you did not sin and seek forgiveness, God would remove you and come with the people who would sin and seek forgiveness from God. And he would forgive them. So do it. What are you waiting for? Repentance is key to connecting with Allah. We are not being mindful of Allah enough. That alone is worth repenting for. I would like the first thing to th I think of in the morning to be God. And the last thing I think of when I sleep is my relationship with God. Repentance is the way to connect with the divine and to close that space from Allah that we create. Remember, it's a fictional space. In reality, there is no space between us and our maker. Allah is closest to us, yet we forget that. Remember the creation story of Adam and Hawa. They disobeyed Allah 
One of the first interactions between Adam and Allah was one of forgiveness. When Adam said in chapter 7, verse 23, When Allah taught him how to repent, he said, O oh Lord, we have wronged our souls. If you do not forgive us and have mercy, we shall be lost. We do not want to be lost in regret. By practicing repentance, the noise in our heads turns down, but not off, and we are realigned towards Allah. So how to repent? Remember, when you feel guilty or have shame about something you did or be, so because of the way you acted, it's easy to feel stuck and hopeless and wish you could take it back and turn back the clock and do it a different way. It's easy for us to wallow in that moment and let it drag on and on. Instead, activate, turn to Allah, try to create a habit where if you feel remorse or regret, instantly, God forgive me, God help me. Repent and repent and repent and keep asking for forgiveness. He is the most forgiving and Allah, he will forgive you. Change your obsession over that act for stop focusing on that thing and focus on God. Again, in chapter 7, verse 201, we read, those who are aware of God and think of him when Satan prompts them to do something and immediately they can see straight. When we feel anxiety or grief or worry, turn to Allah, ask for help. I have one thing you could say that's very easy. Allahumma innaka afoon tuhibb al-afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, Erase my sins. You love to erase them, so erase them from me. Another one, astaghfirullah al-hadim wa atubu ilayk. I ask forgiveness from Allah, the mighty, and I repent to him. Astaghfirullah al-hadim wa atubu ilayk. Then you can create a habit. If you force yourself, remember yourself, remind yourself to do this, it will become a habit. It'll become natural. Whenever I feel anxious, whenever I'm worried, I can remember. Astaghfirullah al-hadim wa atubu ilayk. That thing that I'm worried about, that thing that is finite, cancel that. Turn to the infinite. Turn to Allah. Ask for forgiveness. And finally, one last thing we can do is act with divine attributes. Find a list of the 99 names of the attributes of Allah. Remember, Amr Khawaja has been giving khutbahs on the 99 names or attributes of Allah. Look those up on YouTube, on, those, on the khutbahs. Find an attribute that resonates with you. Call out to Allah with that name or act with that attribute. Act with generosity. Act with compassion, act with love, act it out with intention. And then finally, just so you know, there's a next level after Tawbah, believe it or not. And this is called Inaba. Yeah, it's the next level. It's a hastening to please Allah while we continuously and repeatedly performing Tawbah. It's like Tawbah, next level, continuous Tawbah. So part of Inaba is to retreat to Allah with your heart, with love, with, re with reverence and sincerity. And a person who performs inaba is called a munib. And you know who was a munib? The Prophet Ibrahim. In chapter 11, verse 75, Allah says, Inna Ibrahim al-Harimun awahun munib. Truly Abraham was forbearing, tender-hearted, and ever turning to his Lord. Prophet Shuhaib was also called a munib. In chapter 11, verse 88, he said, quote, O my people, consider if I stand on a clear proof from my Lord, and he blessed me with a good provision from him. I do not want to do what I am forbidding you from. I only intend to reform. My success only comes through Allah. In him I trust, and to him I return. <inaudible> Continuously returning to Allah. Let's try to become a munib. Prophet Shuhaib was successful. If you are successful, become a munib. Use that to return to Allah, to thank him. You're successful not because of what you did. It's because Allah is blessing you. Return to Allah in good times as well. So I'll close with that. Tawbah or returning to Allah by calling out to him for forgiveness and remembrance anytime and in all times, in good times and challenging times, then doing it over and over again. That's inaba, next level. Sisters and brothers, contemplate these things and consider starting a practice this evening of returning to Allah at the end of your day. After you've taken care of all of your business, caring for your family, your elderly parent, taking care of work tasks, at your job, the shopping for your house, whatever. At the end of the day, before you lay down, when everything is quiet, return to Allah, call out to him, ask him to guide you and forgive your mistakes. I ask you Allah for forgiveness. I ask you Allah for guidance. We have made many mistakes and distanced ourselves from you and we want to return to you. Please guide us back to your grace and your light and to your compassionate embrace. Help us to remember that we came from you and to you we will return. 
We want to return to you again and again and again at the end of each day when we, when we may have separated ourselves from you. Oh Allah, protect us, our families and our neighbors. Oh Allah, protect and shield all of those who are under duress and insecure with respect to shelter and food and health. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.